guys and welcome back to my channel Save the Moment. So if you are here today, it could be because you got your job on the cruise line and you have no idea what to expect on your first day or you're just curious about what it's like to be on a cruise ship and working on a cruise ship and so I will take you through what the first day of being on a cruise line was like especially as a new employee bright-eyed and bushy-tailed didn't realize how hard I'd be working but it was worth every single moment of being on board okay so what happens nine times out of ten a cruise ship or a cruise line will make sure that your accommodation is booked for or your recruiting agency will make sure that that's done for you so depending on if you're hired directly from the cruise line or from a recruiting company they will make sure that that happens for you so you could either have to pay for your own ticket okay and that does happen in some cases but in a lot of cases the recruiting agencies or the cruise lines will pay for your flight okay so you fly from wherever you're coming from in the world all the way to the port nine times out of ten it is not the best flight in the world it's gonna be a long 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 flight okay <laughs> with many layovers but if you're lucky and you have a couple of direct flights then you're one of the very few okay so you'll get to your hotel once you arrive now before you arrive at your hotel you'll know exactly what the hotel is you'll know what time pickup is and so you will get to your hotel and literally if you're getting on board the next day like by 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. there's a bus coming to pick up all of the crew and of course it differs so sometimes you could be joining a ship and it could be just you or sometimes you could be joining a ship and there's quite a few of you and it's I mean there's comfort in numbers right so it's nice to know that if you're at a hotel and there's a couple more people that are joining the same ship on the same day you all will sort of go together Regardless though, nine times out of 10, your cruise line will make sure that you're being picked up and collected from the hotel and being taken to the port. Once you arrive at the port terminal, so you would essentially be arriving before most passengers are coming on board. So what a home port is essentially, and this is where you'll be brought to, or a turnaround port. I mean, you could be literally be getting on in the middle of a cruise. So it really depends, but if you're getting on board a ship and it's a turnaround day, essentially that's when passengers are getting off and new passengers are getting on. So they are at the end of the cruise, they're coming on and then the whole new crew is coming back on board of all the passengers, okay? So it's a really busy day and so nine times out of ten they get you there early so that you're not having to be in and amongst the passengers disembarking and embarking on the same day. Right, so what will then happen? is you will come to your uh, terminal, your cruise terminal, you go through all your paperwork. So when I got on board, they had the HR manager, your, um, so not every department head would be on board, like on in that cruise terminal with you, but nine times out of 10, they've got a couple of the department heads. And so they're making sure that they've got the right people <laughs> that should be hired and brought on board that day. They'll have the, HR manager and then on the ship I worked on we had somebody called a crew purse and so they came um, on to, into the crew terminal as well to make sure we had our medical licenses not medical licenses but like our um, how do I describe it so just so that you know you have to do a medical before you get on board and they, they test for all sorts of stuff they basically want to just make sure that you're super healthy you're not heavy into drugs and I mean any drugs in your system is obviously not a good thing and I will go into that in a different video about what they'll look for when they're doing your medical and then there's like a whole bunch of other stuff that you need to have done but anyway so they want to make sure that your medical certificate that you get from the doctor is that you've passed and everything's in order then they want to make sure that you've got your c1d visa which is your seafarers visa okay if you are a seasoned or you're going back on board or you've worked on ships before nine times out of ten you'll have a seafarers book a seaman's book and that is separate from your passport and essentially basically what that is is a tracker of which vessels you've been on and for the duration that you've been on those vessels okay so if you need something like that of course your recruiting company will let you know if you need something like that and then of course uh, you need your offer letter 
and uh, yeah, your passport. So as long as you've got all of those documents ready and to go, you should be fine. I've gotten onto a ship once where the person left his medical um, card and uh, he couldn't get on the ship because they were like, well, we don't know whether or not you passed your medical. So you have to either find a way to get that to us, but we can't let you on board. So it can be really strict and really stressful. Right, so once that happens, you get on board, okay, with all your luggage, <laughs> you're carrying all your heavy luggage because you don't know what to expect, you get onto the ship and you'll meet your head of department. They will then allocate your cabin, okay? What ends up happening and what happened with me because I was a shoppy, there was one person from the boutique that volunteered to help me for the day. So show me around, especially because it's your first day on a cruise ship. It gets really overwhelming understanding all the different walkways and where you need to go and then the upstairs and downstairs and how not all walkways are completely the same length of the ship. Sometimes you have to walk up a floor and then cross it and then walk down a floor. It's very confusing, okay, very confusing. So I had somebody who was absolutely lovely come and show me where the staff canteen is, where the crew bar is, where uh, on the ship I worked on we had a swimming pool area and a jacuzzi area, where that is, where the boutique is that I was working in. So they did this little tour for me and uh, then I had to go back to my cabin and unpack my life. Shortly after that I had to make sure that I went for a HR a training session so essentially that was just an induction training it was about an hour and a half at max and so they obviously just went through all the policies and procedures that you need to understand about being on board a cruise line all right so that was then so just remember I've just flown almost 24 hours got to the hotel at like one o'clock in the morning woke up at six had a quick breakfast, got on the bus, onto the bus, got to the ship, went through all of that whole customs, because also you have to go through customs. You have to stamp your passport, make sure all your paperwork's good. Then I did a quick tour, trying to remember where everything is. Had to go for an induction training. Okay, so once that was done, I had maybe two or three hours before the ship had to set sail. And that's where I probably was the most nervous because once you get on board, you get allocated a safety duty. And when you're on a ship, your number one job role, and this is what people don't realize working on a cruise line, is that safety is the most important. It is more important than your jo the job that you're paid for. And so they are very strict about making sure you understand all the safety protocols necessary for surviving okay because anything can happen at sea a ship can literally catch fire and in 30 minutes half of it is burnt down and you could potentially be abandoning ships so there are a lot of things that you need to understand and learn about safety when you're on board that really is like make or break you know what i mean anyway so we have to of course do crew drill well not crew drill but it's the the ship's drill that whenever you're on a cruise ship and if you've ever been on a cruise ship as a passenger you probably remember that once you get on board as soon as you do sail away everybody has to go to their master stations and what a master station is essentially is the area that you are allocated to in the case in the case of an emergency so there are different places on each ship of course most of them are on the same level it will be the restaurants it will be the theater it will be those kind of areas where large amounts of people can be put together they will roll call all of those places of course that's in an emergency but on my ship in my case they had a digital scan code a digital like gadget that could scan your key card as a passenger to basically do a, a digital roll call and so we would then have to, as our safety duty, go and stand in our safety position because before we get to the master station, we have to make sure we are ushering the passengers to the right places. So that's part of your safety duty. We then have to put on our life vests and a cap and <laughs> stand in that safety position until the captain of the ship relocates us. 
So he will make an announcement on the PA system and we can then all go to our master station. Okay, once that happens, then over the PA system, the entire safety drill that is uh, explained to the passengers and the crew alike of what you need to do in emergency will happen. So this is obviously around four or five o'clock PM. Once that happens, everybody is obviously done. You go back to your cabin and of course you are already in uniform. So the second you arrive, you get your uniform as well. So you're in uniform, you chuck all of that stuff off. And then for me, because I was a shoppy, I had to go to the store and our management had a literally a 15 to 20 minute power meeting before every shift. So as we were sailing away, because our boutique stores cannot open until we are a certain distance from the shoreline. And so it would be perfect timing. We would obviously make sure that we had our meetings and it was, everybody knew a schedule ahead, what was happening and what time we needed to be at our store. So we would, th then I went into the store after we sailed away, we had a meeting. I was introduced to the team and <laughs> that was my day. I literally went from flying from halfway across the world to jumping on this massive, incredibly beautiful cruise ship and working within literally 24 to 36 hours, okay? Once that had happened, of course, I was with somebody and I had some training, so I had to obviously make sure I understood how the register worked, how we charge passengers, uh, what we needed to make sure of in terms of our daily opening and closing duties. So very similar to how every job works on your first day, it's training day, but for the most part, it's literally, you get dropped into the deep end of the water, literally. <laughs> And uh, you're forced to swim, hey, like if you if you can't cut it, <laughs> you're going to start getting performance appraisals. And I mean, it's a proper corporate business. So if you're not pulling your weight and you're not doing well, of course, management will guide you, etc, etc. But there are certain steps that have to be taken in order to help you get to the desired outcome that your management is looking for. But essentially, that is how my first day was when I was on board a cruise line. It was the most overwhelming thing. And then, of course, you know my cabin and i'm pretty sure i've still got pictures and while this video is going i'm gonna throw some pictures up for you guys because i've definitely got a few in the archives of how tiny a cabin is you literally sleep on a bunk bed that is like i couldn't even sit up straight i literally had to like hunch in because i always ended up on the top bloody bunk it was really crappy but i had to hunch just to like sit up straight if i wanted to sit up straight i had to leave m my bed you know and you s literally live in this tiny room with a tiny bathroom and you've always got uh, a cabin mate nine times out of ten it will obviously be a girl unless you have a partner on board and you would like to share your cabin that is not easy either and obviously that is something i'll go into later i'll speak about relationships at sea <laughs> and uh, how stormy those waters can get but you know that's your little life um but what got me through that and i have to tell you guys is that as much as the circumstances of where i slept used to like really irk me a little bit the reality was is that every day i got to wake up in a different country and i got to see parts of the world that i'm not sure i'll ever have the opportunity to go back and see and that is the the price to pay you know nothing in life is for free hey and being able to work on a cruise ship and have seen the places I've seen and to have earned the money I earned and to have met the people I've met and to drink the limoncello when I was in Italy and drink ouzo in Greece. It's just unreal. It's actually unreal and I'm so grateful. I'm so fiercely protective of those memories and the fact that I made that opportunity happen for myself you know and so i can never look back at any of these experiences and go oh you know i wish i hadn't done it no no i wish i had done it sooner i wish i had done it longer you know what i mean like those kind of moments that you have in your life you realize just how super incredibly grateful you are and you realize too how little opportunity there is out there for a lot of people to think outside of the box and you know not to get too mushy on you guys but one of the biggest reasons why i'm doing this 
YouTube channel is because I want to inspire people to do more than just what they think they know, to see more, to experience more. Life is fleeting and at the risk of sounding like an, an inspirational speaker and you know making you feel terrible about your life because you haven't done all the things you wanted to do, no it's not even about that it's just you know we're so we're so frozen by fear sometimes that we're not able to push through that and there are so many different reasons for so many different people why it's not possible for them to push through that fear. But if you are able to, and it's just yourself held, holding you back from potentially changing your life, just do it. The only thing you could lose is potentially not being happy in that moment that you thought you would be. But here's the thing about life, you know, is if you make a decision, and this is something I've had to learn the hard way, is making the decision that has a sacrifice to it. Every choice has a sacrifice to it. It can be a good or a bad sacrifice, all right? But if you've made a choice and you think that this is the best choice for your life, and it turns out that it wasn't exactly how you planned out, it had planned out to be, that's okay. It's okay to readjust. It's okay to rethink the dream and the goal, but also to make sure that once you've followed through on that choice, that you don't find every excuse to not be happy with that choice. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's just a little bit of insight into how my head thinks about these things. But I really hope that by sharing all of these different recruiting companies and the opportunities that are out there, that you realize it's not so difficult after all. Anyway, guys, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have anything to say, <laughs> say it in the comments below. Bye.